team. <laughs> First question, please, to Tom Decent. Tom, are you there? Sorry, have you got me, guys? Yes, got you. All good. Sorry, Pat. Hey, I'm just wondering if you have finalised an 11 that you're willing to share. Yes, we have. Um, Joshy Hayeswood misses out this week and happy to say Mitchell Swepson will debut. Uh, can you elaborate on that thinking? That's obviously a debut for Swepson. Uh, has he been told that news, how pumped he's in? What gives you confidence he's ready for that? Yeah, he's pumped. Uh, to be honest, we're all pumped for, for Swepo. He's spent a lot of time uh, running drinks over the last couple of years. He's absolutely ready. Um, he's been a huge part of the squad, even though he hasn't been playing. So we're really excited to see him get a chance. Um, you know, a combination of things. I think the wicket here looks a, a little bit drier. Um, historically, a bit, bit friendlier for, for the spinners. Um, yeah, we think particularly a, a wrist spinner um, of Swepo's quality. Um, gives us a, a balance, gives us a real, uh, gives us the best opportunity to take 20 wickets. And yeah, I just think he's, he's ready. Um, so yeah, excited, so excited for him. Um, yeah, Joshy misses out. Um, we still think, you know, River swing could be a factor in this game. Mel Farrell, please. Uh, thanks, Brian. Hey, Pat. Um, can you just talk to us a little bit about uh, Mitch and the, the sort of person he's been around? He's obviously been there since that 2017 tour in India when you came back and played your first, te uh, first test in six years. So can you give us an idea of just, you know, that, like how he's been around the team and how he's dealt with disappointments of never quite making it until now? Yeah, I think the first thing about a spin bowler, especially a wrist spin bowler, is um, you know, to become really good, you've got to work hard. And you know, Swepo bowls for longer than just about anyone else in the nets. Um, and he has done for, you know, as long as I've been on tour with him, he, he works incredibly hard at his game. Um, he's been really, really good for Queensland in the Shield. He is, um, you know, won games off his own back for them. Um, even in the... Most recent T20 World Cup, he, he didn't play, but he was a huge part of the 15-man squad over there. Um, so he's, he's just a really good presence, really positive, um, hard worker, good fun to be around. Um, and in terms of his cricket, just high quality. Um, I think he's always improving and, yeah, just, just feel like he's absolutely ready to go. Andrew McGlashan, please. Thanks, Brian. Um, hey, Pat, just to change tack slightly from the bowling, just onto the batting, you, your top order had four guys get to 50 and then Cam got to 48 as well last week. How important will it be, not just with Nye on this test, but the subcontinent cricket you have over the next 12 months that when guys get in, they really make it count with sort of the 150 plus scores? Yeah, spot on. Yeah, we spoke about that after the game. Um, there's some really you know, good positives from the batting um, group to to get high 400s, but yeah, I think spot on over here, it's, if you get yourself in, you, you've got to try and capitalise. And, you know, I think even last week, um, if we're being really, really um, critical, we, we might've missed a chance where we could have put a, a good lead ahead and, and maybe had a chance to bowl, um, you know, bowl on day five with a bit of a lead. And, and that's, you know, us, us tail enders as well. So um, yeah, they, they've been really, you know, working hard the last couple of days of training. Um, I think this wicket will provide a couple of, you know, a couple more questions and, and they're up for it. So, um, yeah, full confidence. Cheers, Pat. David Mark, please. Pat, I'm just wondering, what did you learn from the first test and what improvements do you want to make for the second test? Yeah, overall, I was pretty happy with how we, we stuck at it. Um, I think... One of the learnings was, um, you know, before coming over here, we, we spoke about really managing the tempo of the game. And um, I thought we did that brilliantly during the first game. Um, yeah, we didn't get, obviously, as many wickets we would have liked, um, but we never let the run rate slip, um, which I think in, in past tours in the subcontinent uh, we have. 
Um, so I always felt like we were, you know, not we, we never lost control of the game. Um, yeah, I think only taking three or four wickets for the game, um, albeit a you know pretty benign wicket. I think, um, yeah, look at ways we could have been more creative and, and tried new things. But yeah, I think overall we we left that test match, um, yeah, feeling like we we uh, we tried a lot of um, yeah tried as much as we could on that wicket. So um, yeah, I think as a test match, it's it's an absolute outlier that last one and, and put it behind us and. Yeah, come to here where we we probably get um, close to to the conditions we'd expect in a subcontinent um, test match. Shahid Hashmi, please. Uh, morning, Pat. Um, there, there was an admission after the Pindi test that the pitch was prepared to nullify Australia's pace attack. Do you think that uh, the rival camp has fear of Australia's pace attack, or they respect too much? Oh, it's, it's hard to say. Um, yeah, you know, I think for for a long time it's been our you know, one of our strengths uh, in our test sides. Our um, you know being able to have tall, fast bowlers. Um, uh, so yeah, you know, don't blame anywhere we play that they try and produce conditions that that perhaps might nullify the opposition. Um, uh, so yeah, if anything, I you know found it a real positive that they went away from a wicket that they would you know traditionally play there in rural Pindi. Um, yeah, it's, you know, wait and see if that continues for the, for this week. Barat, right, please. Uh, thanks, Brian. Uh, morning, Pat. Uh, it just uh, looked like Steve Smith and David Warner were really creating a rough uh, on those pitches and on, on the far side in the nets. Is that based on whatever you guys have seen? You spoke about the pitch being dry. Do you expect a lot of rough and the pitch to break up sooner than you know, most other pitches? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, you know, at training you try to take it to the extreme, so they're they're trying to produce you know extreme conditions so that on day four or five um, they're ready for for what might um, you know come up. But yeah, I think yeah, I expect this wicket to break up a little bit more. Um, don't necessarily means you know, don't think it from you know, ball one of the test matches is going to be ragging, but yeah, I think there'll be a bit more rough this test. Uh, sorry, Pat, if I can just slip uh, uh, another quick one. Like, have you had a chat with, with Steve or Nathan about, uh, you know, captaining two spinners? Uh, it'll be a new experience for you in that sense. Yeah, yeah, had a couple of quick chats. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, we'll keep chatting today. But, yeah, I've got a few different ideas. But, um, yeah, I, I think you, especially over here, it's probably learning from the first test. It's always nice to have kind of attacking ball from one end. Um, and a, a more holding role down the other end, I think. Um, but, you know, different times call, call for different uh, methods. But, yeah, you know, confident that even as a leg spinner, Swepo can really play that holding role, role if needed as well. Thanks, Pat. Lockie McCurdy, please. Hey, Pat, obviously uh, with two spinners, it means that for the first time we'll see Cam Green essentially playing as the third quick in the team. Uh, what sort of role or what did you like about the role he played in the first test in Royal Pindi and what do you want to see from him as sort of the, the third seamer and how do you think you'll use him in this test? Yeah, it's, you know, I was, I was really happy with how he went in the first test. Um, he's still, you know, that's his first test match in subcontinent conditions, probably first test match with a reversing ball. Um, you know, these conditions, even if you play a lot of shield cricket, you might never um, experience. So, uh, yeah, I thought he, um, you know, finished the test learning more than, you know, he, he'd known at the start of the test. I think, you know, as a fifth bowling option here, particularly, um, you know, might be more of a holding role, but if the ball starts reversing, you know, he bowls 140 kilometres, so he, he could be a real asset then as well. Faisan Lakani, please. Yes, Pat. Uh, I bet you it's been now that over two weeks that you guys are in Pakistan. What you had in your mind before coming to Pakistan and what is your message to your colleagues now after spending over two weeks in this country? Yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been a great tour. Um, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, us playing group. Uh, yeah, we were really well looked after in Islamabad and it's the same here in Karachi. Um, yeah, really nice hotel, good food, uh, well looked after. And yeah, every time we leave the hotel to go to the ground, I think it hits home how lucky we are to be 
you know, so well looked after all the locals um, and literally stop, stop what they're doing to, to, I guess, get us to, to the, to the stadium, which is, um, yeah, it doesn't go unnoticed. We're, we're really thankful for the lengths that everyone's gone to here to, to make this test series happen. So um, yeah, we, we've loved it. Um, yeah. Can't wait for the next two tests. It's a really special series. Andrew Ramsey, please. Uh, thanks, Brian. Hi, Pat. Um, you mentioned the you thought reverse swing will play a role here. Um, I assume that's because of the sort of fairly well-trafficked centre wicket area. Um, did you see enough in the hints you got of it at the, at the test of Royal Pindy to think your guys have got it pretty much under control as much as you can? Uh, I think it'll be a bigger factor here. Um, yeah, as you said, the, the square's a lot drier. Um, even with rain around in Royal Pindy, um, I think the ball got quite soft and, and damp at times. Um, so I think it'll be a much bigger factor here and, and probably pretty early on as well. Um, yeah, I think even day one, I wouldn't be surprised if you, if you see it reversing. And yeah, I, yeah, I was happy. We kept talking about it throughout the game, um, trying to find our um, yeah, ball maintenance you know, way to try and keep it dry and, and keep it swinging. And uh, Starkey and, and I've both played a lot of cricket with reversing balls. So um, yeah, I feel like we're ready to go. Eddie Summerfield, please. Yeah, g'day, Pat. Thanks for your time today. Um, one, firstly, about yourself. How are you feeling? There were a few reports around yesterday that you left training early. And secondly, how's the uh, rest of the group feeling? Pretty short turnaround between first and second tests. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm 100%. I didn't leave training early. Um, yeah, every, everyone's fine. We're, we've got a full contingent to, to select from. Um, yeah, we managed, especially the fast bowlers through that that second innings uh, in the first test, knowing that it was a short turnaround. So um, now we're all absolutely ready to go. Mia Ali, please. Hi, Pat. Good morning. Uh, Numan Ali was really good uh, on that uh, benign uh, Rahul Pindi wicket. But this time it's going to be drier here in Karachi, as you mentioned. Uh, how have you guys planned to tackle his left arm spin? And do you expect Pakistani spinners to be a threat in this one? Yeah, yeah, I think history shows that the spinners are um, probably more damaging here than, than the pacemen. Um, yeah, I thought he bowled well in the first uh, first test match. Um, but equally, I, I thought our batters you know, had their plans and, and played really well. I think the, quite a few of those wickets were probably non-traditional ways um, that our batters got out. So I think that's a, a big tick for... Um, yeah, their game plan, but it's going to have to be yeah super tired if, if this does spin as much as um, perhaps we, we think. Got four more questions now. Uh, Huzefa Khan, Mohammed Akram Khan, Bada Uzaman, and also David Mark. So first of all, uh, Huzefa Khan, please. Okay, thanks, Brian. Good morning, Pat. Uh, Pat, we have seen Steve Smith bowling in the nets for a, a long time yesterday. So, are we going to see him more bowling in the, at the more regular bowler in the garage test? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't bank on that. Um, yeah, especially with Swepson in. But, yeah, he's, he's certainly an option. Mohammed Akram Khan, please. Hi, Pat. Pat, there is a great debate, debate regarding Rahul Pindi dead pitch, but Noman Ali has uh, shown his class, what he has done with his bowling. So I expect there is a solid spin track in Karachi. So what's your plan against Noman Ali and Sajid Khan? And please tell us a little bit about what happened with Alex Carey yesterday. Uh, I'll start with Alex Carey. Um, that was very funny. Uh, we were just sitting around waiting to go on the bus. And uh, <laughs> just walk straight into the pool. Um, so it's very funny. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen, actually. Um, we just got a new footage out this morning of the CCTV camera from a different angle, which is even funnier. So, uh, yeah, the boys had a good laugh. Uh, Kez had a very funny laugh at himself as well. <laughs> um, yeah, in terms of the other question about spinners, yeah, I think we did a lot of prep leading into this tour and um, in Karachi before that test match, expecting really um, you know, spin-friendly conditions. So everyone's got their own game plans. Every batter is going to do it slightly differently. Um, and, yeah, they're all ready to go. Buddy, as a man, please. Uh, 
but uh, the Australian team has not won the test match uh, at the National Stadium. Karachi team did. At this time, they have made a special plan to win uh, against Pakistan. Uh, I think we prepare every test match to try and win. Um, obviously, we haven't played a lot of here for a long time, so I wouldn't read into that too much. Last question, please. David Mark. Yeah, thanks, Brian and Pat. Um, just wondering how the team's going emotionally since the passing of Shane Warne. Has that affected the team at all, I guess, I mean, obviously psychologically, but I guess in terms of the, your playing as well? Yeah, everyone's going okay, thanks. Um, yeah, with Rod as well. He, Rod was quite close to, to um, you know, quite a few staff members and, and players as well. Um, yeah, I think everyone's... Yeah, still in disbelief. Um, but yeah, we've you know, shared a lot of stories. Um, you know, especially Warner, he was the hero to a lot of our players growing up. Um, he's still you know one of our favourite ever cricketers. Um, yeah, I think it's quite special that yeah, you know, someone like Mitchell Swepson is going to debut tomorrow um, as a as a leg spinner who you know grew up trying to replicate Warney. Um, but yeah, everyone's you know getting around each other. I think it. it yeah, hits home. Um, you know, these kind of moments give, gives everyone you know, moments of clarity and perspective. And um, yeah, I think if anything, it, you know, the way he played was a pretty good blueprint for for every you know player that wants to be part of Test wins and win the game for their team. So, um, if anything, a few of those stories has, has hit home and um, you know invigorated a lot of the players. Just has it been, I guess, I know Warren worked with Schweppes and has it been particularly poignant for him, the fact that he's been selected now? Uh, I don't know. I haven't spoken to, to Schweppes particularly about that, but, yeah, I think you know, all spinners have, have a closer affinity. Um, I know Nathan Lyon had, had got a lot of value off Shane Warren. Even forward, um, Ahmed, who's here as a, as a consultant, um, you know, worked a lot with Warney. So, uh, yeah, I think... The common theme is, you know, everyone seems to have a story or two, um, yeah, about warning. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. Take care and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you,